In the previous lecture, we learned basics of BJT operation. What exactly is going on inside the transistor? How do the electrons and holes move around? And how do we get this um, gain? Or how do we control the current from collector to emitter using a base current? Uh, in this lecture, we are going to uh, create a large signal model for the bipolar junction transistor. We will also look at the bipolar junction transistor model for saturation region. And then um, we will uh, play with PNP transistors. Uh, in general, students get uh, familiar with dealing with NPN transistors. But when you give them uh, PNP transistors, they fumble a little bit. So I'm intentionally going to go through some practice about how do you bias the PNP transistors and how does the current flow in PNP transistors. Then we will get into modeling of the BJT. Um, as I have taught you earlier, we always start with a large signal model and then we figure out a DC operating point of any device and then we around that operating point, we come up with uh, AC small signal model. So how do we do that for the BJT? That's what we will cover. So the key equations we derived for the bipolar transistor BJT are the following. One is IC is equal to IS exponential VBE divided by VT and base current IB is given by IC divided by beta. Beta we said it's something like 50 to 200 and emitter current IE is IC plus IB is equal to IC divided by alpha and alpha is beta divided by beta plus 1. So these are the main equations for uh, BJT in forward active region. Important. Forward active region. What does forward active region mean? Again to recap, this is collector, base and emitter. We have N, P, N. Base emitter junction is forward biased like this and collector base junction is reverse biased like this. Now we are going to write based on this information we are going to write large signal equivalent model for NPN transistor. Let's write it here. First of all we know we will draw three nodes collector, emitter and base. So we know that there is a diode between base to emitter junction which is forward biased. So this would be our VBE and there is a current flowing from collector which goes in like this and that is given that is IC that is given by IS exponential VBE divided by VT and the current flowing through the emitter is given by its IE that is equal to IC divided by alpha. The saturation current of this diode is given by ISE which is equal to IS divided by alpha. Again, this is a model that we are writing. We can also write this model slightly differently as follows. In this case, we will write base here and then we will draw collector on this side. So in this case, again, we have a diode. We have a current source. We said that the base current IB, which was over here also, and there is VEE flowing and the current IE flowing over here and there is current IC flowing here. So we know that IC is given by IS e to the power VBE by VT and for this diode the base emitter junction diode IS is given by IS divided by beta. So this would be your large signal equivalent circuit model. This is all based on the 
um, the previous three equations that we have drawn. So all this stuff happens during the forward active region, all the analysis that we have done. What happens when we have both the junctions forward biased, base emitter as well as base collector, okay? And we call that saturation region. So let's talk about that now. So in this case, uh, BE and BC, both forward biased. And when we say base to collector junction is forward bias, we say VBC is greater than 0.4 volts. Because we know that below uh, 0.4 volts, the current flowing through that forward junction diode is quite small, if you remember the exponential characteristics of the diode. So we will draw the model again. This is our IB. This is IC. IE, emitter, base and collector. This current is given by e to the power VB by VT. This is base to emitter junction diode is forward biased. So this is coming, this is coming straight from the forward active region. Now on top of this we will add base to collector junction which is also forward biased. So in that case we will have another diode that we will draw in this picture and that is the base to collector junction diode that will be forward biased and the current is given by current flowing through that will be given by isc e to the power vbc divided by vt once again let me repeat base to collector junction diode is going to uh, when that gets forward biased then we add this component, ISC is the, the current, uh, saturation current for that diode. Once the base to collector junction diode is forward biased, then it will carry ISC exponential PBC divided by VT. So using uh, this combination of the model, we can write that IC collector current is Kirchhoff's current law. Uh, at this junction that is equal to is e to the power vbe by vt minus isc this c denotes the collector diode collector base junction diode and this s denote, denotes base to emitter junction diode exponential vbc divided by vt and ib is equal to Look at IB, this current right here, Kirchhoff's current law right here, it would be IS divided by beta. That would be the current flowing through this model diode, base to emitter junction diode, exponential VBE by VT plus, that's the current plus here, Kirchhoff's current law. So that would be ISC e to the power VBC divided by VT. So you can see that the base current has increased quite a lot now because of addition of this base to collector junction diode being forward bias. So beta in saturation region is given by IC divided by IB in saturation and this should be quite less than beta in the forward active region. Now let's look at the voltages. If you look at the diode, um, if you look at the BJT, we are interested in what is collector to emitter voltage. Okay, so VCE uh, during saturation from collector to emitter is given by VBE, which is here, VBE, and then you subtract out the VBC, which is from here to here. So VBE we know is approximately 0.7 volts and we say that the transistor is getting into saturation when VBC starts getting close to 0.4 volts because that's when the uh, collector base junction diode will start kicking in and it will uh, have a lot of current flowing. Okay, so this is let's say 0.4 volts then we say that around 0.3 volts this transistor is starting to get in saturation region. and 
we say that this VC saturation can be somewhere 0.1 to 0.3 volts with 0.1 volts being deep saturation region. The transistor is in deep saturation. If you want to look at the, the diagram, potential diagram, we can draw it this way again. So let's say this is the base potential and from base to emitter we have plus minus 0.7 volts and base to collector that is also forward biased and we are saying that is about 0.4 volts. This is our collector. So we can see that the collector emitter, collector, collector to emitter voltage is approximately 0.3 volts and if it starts reducing then the transistor is getting deeper and deeper into saturation. Now that we have um, worked on so much for NPN transistors, let's look at PNP transistor and how do we bias it. It would be great if you can do it on your own first. I will give you 10 seconds uh, because you will see it can be quite confusing if you are doing it for the first time. So, but give it a shot and I will wait for 10 seconds or you can pause the video. So question is how would you put PNP transistor in a forward active region. Let me draw it for you now. So in the NPN case the current is flowing in this direction. So in the PNP case we draw it upside down. So the current is flowing again from top high potential to low potential from top to down, top to bottom. So here in this, in this case it would be our emitter, base and collector junction. And since we said let me write here this is P, N and P just so that you know the diodes. As I said emitter base junction diode is forward biased for forward active region. So this would be positive potential like this and we call that VEB and base to collector junction diode is reverse bias. So we will draw it in this fashion. V, B, C. Fairly straightforward and the model would look, the two models uh, that we did for the NPN we can draw them here too. So in this case we would have a meter on top and then the base is here and collector over here. So we know that the current is given by collector current is given by Is e to the power Veb divided by Vt because Veb is the positive potential and here is our Veb diode from emitter to base for PNP transistor. The Ib current will be flowing in this direction now and Ie current will be flowing in this direction and this would be your Ic. We would have plus minus VEB across this and the diode would carry IS divided by alpha times exponential VEB by VT. That's the current it's going to carry. Okay. And we will draw the other model also. So this is your base. This is your emitter. And this is your collector. Collector current is IS e to the power VEB by VT. VEB is the potential here and the diode has IS divided by beta current because of the model change and here you have IE. This is again a large signal model for the PNP transistor. Next we are going to look at transistor characteristics a little more in detail. When we plot IC versus VBE in volts here and IC is current in milliamps or amps whatever, milliamps generally. What we expect is when VBE is below let's say 0.5 volts or so, not much action going on, current is quite small 
and then as soon as we get close to 0.7 volts the base 2 emitter junction diode will get turned on and we will have increase in the current so we would expect something that looks like this exponential increase in the current as the diode gets turned on so this is your characteristics IC versus VBE and here we are saying that it doesn't matter what uh, collector to emitter voltage is this characteristics is independent of collector to emitter okay so we can take few points on this characteristics and those would be different values of VBE1, VBE2, VBE5, something like that. Okay. And we can draw another characteristics over here, which would look like this. We are going to say that this is on the on the x-axis we are going to plot VCE and on the y-axis we are going to plot IC. As we discussed earlier, we are saying that below VCE, this is the region and let's say VCE is less than 0.3 volts. And we are only talking about the region on this side. So in this region, our device is in forward active region. And when VCE is less than 0.3, as we said, we call this SAT region, saturation region. Okay, we'll go step by step. So if the transistor is in forward active region, then for different values of VBE1, we should expect some value of current IC. So for example, for VBE1, we should get this characteristic. For VBE2, we should get this characteristics. VBE3, things like that. Because in the previous this characteristics that we have plotted here, the current IC in the forward active region is independent of VCE. It really doesn't depend on the collector to emitter voltage. Okay. Now, when VCE is equal to zero, then of course, the current has to go to zero IC. So what you would expect then is in the, you would expect the current to kind of fall out here. All the curves will go to zero and this is our curve in the saturation region. I'm going to mark it here again. So this is saturation region and this is active region. So what this curve we are uh, plotting here is saying that let me also write here VBE1, VBE2, VBE3, 4 and VBE5. What we are saying in this curve is the collector current is completely independent of the VCE in active region. In reality, that's not the case. And let me explain what happens. So if we look at the diode cross section again, let's say this is collector, base and emitter. As we increase collector to emitter voltage, okay, collector to emitter voltage, then for a given VBE, let's say this is our VBE and if I keep increasing, if I keep increasing collector to emitter, that means I'm increasing the reverse bias VCB. This reverse bias voltage is going to go increase. So if the collector to base junction is getting more and more reverse biased, we know that the depletion region will keep changing. The depletion region in the base will keep moving further into the base. What this does is effective base width. If you remember in our equation for the emitter current, there was a W in there. The effective base width will start reducing. So if VCE increases, then reverse bias VCB increases and then depletion region will increase into the base and the base width will start dropping. If the base width starts dropping as we go in this direction as the collector to emitter voltage is increasing then we expect the current to change and what do you expect the current 
what will happen to the current? Is will start increasing in our expression. This effect is called Orly effect or base width modulation. So on the graph what you would see then is instead of these flat yellow curves you will see something that looks and the, the way this equation is modeled is Ic is equal to Is e to the power Vb by Vt. This is our original equation. Along with that there will be 1 plus Vce divided by Va. Va is the Orly effect. This Va can be in hundreds of volts. So you can see that Vc is typically less than 5 volts. So Va is being 100 volts. This effect is, is a small variation in the collector current with increase in the Vce. So what you would see then is I'm going to kind of exaggerate the effect on this axis. So let's say this is Va of minus Va. You can see here if Vc becomes minus Va then Ic will go to 0 just from the modeling point of view. Okay. So what you would see then is I'm just going to draw those dotted lines first because all of them will go here. And then if we continue the slope, this is what we will see. Again, this part of the curves is all, I am just using it for modeling. This minus Va is, is not a real number, is used for modeling, extending these curves right here, all the way to origin to draw the slope correctly. Okay, And the model is actually given by this expression right here, the early effect model. Now that we have learned about early effect, we can logically go to the next step, which is concept of the output resistance of a forward active region bipolar transistor. So we have, so this is plus minus VCE and we are looking at what happens to the IC. As we already said, IC is equal to IS e to the power VBE divided by VT including the early effect it's going to be 1 plus VCE divided by VA. VA is the early voltage which could be large value. All right. So we can, we are trying to figure out what's the output resistance of this bipolar transistor. We are looking for a resistance between collector and emitter port. To do that, we change VCE and we see how much IC is changing and that would give us a effective resistance value. Okay. In other words, we can also calculate the derivative del IC divided by del VCE and that would be derivative of this that is going to come out to be IS e to the power VBE divided by VT times 1 divided by VA. Now this factor for the sake of discussion we can call it IC prime. So this will look like IC divided by del VCE is equal to IC prime divided by VA. Since this variation in IC due to VCE is fairly small. In this particular expression, we can always say that, hey, this is close enough to your IC value. We can use that approximation. For now, I'm just showing it as um, this component of the expression, which is IC prime. And in this case, we are doing del IC by del VC. So the resistor value, output resistor value is given by negative of this value that is equal to VA divided by IC prime. And you can say this is collector current without, without early effect. So you can see that the R out will increase if VA increases. In our original assumption, when we did not have any dependence on VCE model, then VA was infinite in that case and R out was infinite. 
However, now we have to consider this R out value. So incorporating this R out in our large signal model, we are going to get, let's go back again to the large signal model. We have one diode and we have a current source. This is our emitter base, IB flowing here, IE flowing here and we have plus minus VBE and we have IC prime which is IS e to the power VBE by VT along with that we will have this resistance which is R out is equal to VA divided by IC prime and this would be your collector current, effective collector current. So this is the new addition to our model, large signal model due to output resistance. And where does that output resistance come from? The early effect which is indicating that as you increase a reverse bias between base to collector, then the, the depletion region width increases in the base as a result of which base width reduces and the current increases. That's what we are modeling with curly early effect. So we cannot really use this for simple calculations all the time, right? So there are some simplified DC models we use to do an initial um, guesswork of the bipolar transistor in a circuit. Is it in which region it's operating in? Is it in active region? Is it in saturation region? So for that, we use these simplified DC models. So first we will talk about NPN transistors. And here we are active region model. So in the active region, we know that base emitter junction is forward biased by plus 0.7 volts base. And this is the emitter. And we have current flowing, which is equal to beta times IB. And this is our collector and we say that VCE has to be greater than 0.3 volts for it to be in active region. And when we go in saturation region, then you would have simply these two diodes here in saturation. So you'll have plus minus 0.7 and here we want VCE sat, let us say 0.2 volts base, collector and emitter. Similarly, we can do it for PNP device, which is you must draw this in your notebook by yourself to get comfortable because as we go along, this has to become second nature for you. VEB here is 0.7 volts and then this is beta times IB again. VEC has to be greater than 0.3 volts. Similarly, we can draw this one also. Both diodes are forward biased. For PNP, this is for PNP. This is 0.7 volts. This is 0.2 volts VCE. Now, we will get into small signal part of the model for the bipolar junction transistor. So far we have looked at large signal model which means we are just looking at the curve, we are looking at every point on the curve. Now we want to do an operating point analysis of a transistor. We would bias the transistor in certain region and then we would do some small signal analysis to figure out um, what's the model of the bipolar for small signal analysis. So let's start. I'm going to do this explicitly first so that you get better understanding. You could just use the equations to figure it out but uh, first time. So the transistor is in forward active region and we are biasing it in this fashion. So here if we um, if we apply just VBE then we would get current IB will flow here and then current IC will flow here and current IE will flow here. And if I introduce 
a voltage source delta VBE, small signal, then IB will change by delta IB, IC will change by delta IC, and then IE will change by delta IE. Okay, so let's write uh, equations IC is equal to IS exponential VBE divided by VT and we insert IC plus delta IB, IC plus delta IC, IS VBE plus delta VBE. In this I am not uh, including the early effect for simplicity. So we should see this is equal to IS So I am substituting this IS exponential VBE by VT with this IC value. This is our bias point and we have done this before earlier, right? So the circuit is biased at IC and this is our small variation. And here we have IC plus delta IC. Now exponential delta VBE by VT, we can simplify it to 1 plus delta VBE divided by Vt approximation and that is valid when delta Vb is much much smaller than Vt. Then we can write this as Ic plus delta Ic is equal to Ic times 1 plus delta Vbe divided by Vt. So we can simplify this and you will get delta Ic is equal to Ic divided by Vt delta VBE. Hence, delta IC divided by delta VBE is given by IC by VT. What is this telling us? This is telling us that if I change my, if I change the VBE by a small value, then my collector current will change by this much. So if you remember uh, when we started bipolars, we talked about control electrodes. So base being the control electrode, if the base current changes slightly, then the collector current changes by this much. Or if you change the base voltage slightly, then the collector current will change by this value. Since we are changing voltage at the control electrode and we are observing change in the current, this is called transconductance and also noted as Gm which is Ic divided by Vt. What is Vt? 26 millivolts at room temperature. So this is an equation that I would like you to memorize for the bipolar transistors transconductors because we would be using it over and over many many times. I hate to tell you to memorize something but this equation is something that you have to memorize because you will be using it so many times. So we figured out if I change my uh, VBE by small value, how much is the change in the IC? And that is given by this value GM transconductance. The next thing we are going to calculate, the small signal parameter, is we would like to see, hey, if I change my VBE, how much current is changing going into the device at the base? And that would tell us what is my input resistance of the device. Okay, input resistance. So if I have a box and if I am applying voltage V and observing delta I, delta V, then I get to see what's the input resistance here. And that is given by, we call that R pi for the bipolar, the input resistance. And that is given by delta VBE looking into the base and delta IB. What is delta VBE? We just said it is equal to from this expression delta VBE is given by delta IC divided by GM. And what is delta IB? Is given by again delta IC divided by beta. R pi is given by beta divided by gm. So the significance of this r pi is 
beta value is 100 to 200 something like that so r pi is very large compared to reciprocal of gm so we calculated two things one is we calculated the gm transconductance of the bipolar the second thing we calculated is the r pi which is input resistance of the bipolar the third effect we're going to look at is what is the output resistance of the bipolar and that will mean that i'm going to change the vce so we will apply delta vce and we'll see what is the change in ice or ic and that should give us the r out so to calculate that let's look at the full bone equation of the bipolar which is ic is equal to is exponential vbe divided by vt and multiply that by 1 plus vce divided by v early voltage so this is our uh, equation including the early effect if early effect was uh, was not there then we would get infinite is the value for r out because there is just no dependence so now we will calculate the derivative of ic with respect to vce and that is given by is exponential vbe by vt divided by va so we can again say that this is equal to approximately equal to ic divided by va so r out output resistance is given by again this is ac output resistance is given by dic by dvce with vbe constant and then we are going to take a negative reciprocal of this and that is given by va divided by ic so three quantities which are going to be part of our bjt small signal model let's highlight them one of them is r out which is given by va early voltage divided by collector current input resistance r pi that is given by beta divided by the transconductance and the transconductance itself which is gm which is ic divided by vt so we will now put all three effects into the model of the bipolar to create an ac model of the bipolar small signal model in the active mode base emitter and collector so between base and emitter we have a resistance which is equal to r pi and what is the value of the r pi is given by beta divided by gm and this will develop v pi around it which is vbe and we also have transconductance change in base voltage will give you collector current and that is given by gm times v pi change in base voltage will is signified by v pi and gm is the transconductance expression we just derived and what is the value of gm is given by collector current bias collector current divided by vt the thermal voltage 26 millivolts at room temperature also there is if i change vce then i have some current flowing from vce and that is our early effect model that is given by this which is r out is equal to va divided by ic so this is the complete small signal model of the bjt in active mode 